Hey guys, it's Rich with your Pagan Perspective Subs Week Monday. Hmm. Coda, put on the coffee. I need coffee. Lots of coffee. Uh, and while you're at it, roll the clip. Hey guys, like I said, this is Rich with your Monday Spot Pagan Perspective Subs Week. And uh, we have two topics this week, and none of them have to do with the introduction. And the only reason I did that introduction was just because it was fun. Yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, first topic comes from, and these are both on spell effectiveness. First topic comes from Hades1347. And it reads, I was wondering if you find that spells work better if you speak to, to your chosen god and goddess in the language of the culture they came from. And the second one comes from Tori41494. I was wondering if, if one has a candle scented of an herb, can that candle re replace the herb in a spell or ritual? Or is it the actual plant that gives the herb its power? Both pretty good questions and kind of a stumper. On the topic of uh, of languages, yeah, I have my notes out because I I wrote these notes before I went to bed, and as you see, I just woke up. So, dang, I have bad handwriting before I go to sleep. Wow. Yeah, um, could have got a hair in my coffee. So yeah, um, to speak to a god or a goddess in their native tongue, I, I don't think would be a bad thing. I think it would actually help a little. Um, it certainly will not hurt if you do it in English, because people have been doing their spells and rituals in whatever tongue that they are. Uh, they they know that they know they've been doing that in whatever tongue that they know for you know who knows how long. So certainly doing it in whatever your native tongue is is not that bad. But the extra energy that you put into learning that language, if you don't already know it. But the extra energy that you would put into learning just a little bit of the language here and there um, probably would help boost your your spells or your rituals just a little bit. And uh, yeah, if you're fluent in that language, that's that's especially uh, awesome. Like if you become fluent in that language, then you've put a lot of of your your energy into learning a language for that deity. Um, now, I will say on a little side note that Kabbalah, you, whenever you study Kabbalah, you end up doing rituals with Hebrew, uh, sometimes modernized Hebrew, depending on who you go with. Um, and I've actually been studying Kabbalah lately. but. Yeah, you end up doing more and more Hebrew in, uh, in your rituals. And, of course, you know what it means before you, you end up saying it. As always, know what you're saying before you say it. Do your research. Uh, you certainly don't want to be asking, you know, the total opposite of what you were trying to ask. And I, I do believe that if, if any deity out there if you pray to any one of them, or ask any one of them in a spell or ritual, whatever, if you ask any one of them and you kind of butcher it up and it kind of means the opposite of what you want it to mean, I truly think they will look into your heart and actually know what you're trying to say. 
So if you're worried about screwing something up, I don't think I'd worry about it as much. Just because they would know what you what you mean to do. And if at very at very least it doesn't work. So, I mean, then you're not really out anything. You didn't hurt anybody, nothing bad happened. So yeah, that was kind of an excessive ramblings of yeah, you can do a ritual in another language or a spell in another language and it could boost your your uh <coughs> excuse me. It could boost your skill your yeah, your skill. It could boost your spell a little bit or a lot depending on on what tradition or path that you follow. So, I mean the best I can say is to go ahead and try it. If it works, let me know because, uh, like I said, I've been studying the Kabbalah and I'm actually going to be doing rituals in Hebrew and that would be fun. Uh, it, it would especially be fun to know how it would, how it's affected your spells or your rituals. So keep me updated on that. I really do, uh, I do want to know what comes of those the uh, comes of that yeah you guys know what I mean the next one is on herbal sense um, yeah <coughs> the herbal sense in uh, in a candle yeah I'm kind of sitting on the counter of my kitchen just so you know yeah I'm a I'm a counter sitter so I'm kind of sitting on my counter and um, kind of sliding off a little. So if you see me struggling, that's why. Um, but yeah, th this is one of those things that um, it's kind of a different strokes for different folks. I know some people they say, you know, if you don't have the herbs, you you can't do this spell. I say, why not? Is it really, is the the herb the, the essence, or is it the the energy that you're putting into it that ultimately makes, you know, a spell effective? Um, now, again, like with the language uh, portion of this video, you do have your energy being put into something like whenever you're using your mortar and pestle when you're uh, when you're mixing your herbs and when you're putting it on the charcoal yeah that, that's all well and good and and great and it's it's an awesome uh, ritual within a ritual if you if you will and uh, it's a way that brings you closer to those those essences but do I think it's needed? Not necessarily. If you have a candle that has maybe essential oils mixed in with it, or you just bought it off the, the Yankee candle shelf, personally I go for party light, but that's just me. But uh, like even if you get it off the Yankee candle shelf, if it is going to help you to raise your energy and to put it out into the world, then I don't think herbs would even be necessary for you. The, the more herbal um, essence, the more that, uh, that you have herbs and, and everything, the more you burn them. You know, it, it's, it's just putting your energy from that and putting it out. It's, it's a way to, to gain energy. So it wouldn't necessarily be needed if you were able to smell a candle, burn a candle, burn an incense that's already made into a stick, and go from there. It's the actual herbs are not needed. The herbs are more like if you're doing tinctures or you're mixing oils or something like that, then yes, they're they're absolutely necessary <coughs> because you are making a tincture, a, a tea, a, a, an oil, a salt, bath salts, 
Um, yes, herbs are most definitely sometimes needed, and uh, but I don't think there's any essence within the herb that if you don't have it that it would make your spell less effective. I do think that if you have a scent that will help you focus your energy on one thing, on what you want. Now if I want a vacation home, I want it down, you know, out by the ocean or whatever. And so I'll, I'll get a candle that reminds me of an ocean breeze. You know, it's it's calming me down, it's focusing my energy, it's giving me a scent to ultimately focus on, which is really what an herb is supposed to do, or an incense is supposed to do. It's supposed to help you focus. Um, so yeah, that a candle would work just fine in that situation. So yeah, I don't think using a candle in any way would take away from using an herb instead, you know, or, yeah, anyway, you guys know what I mean. You can use a candle, yes, incense, stick incense, cone incense, whatever. It's all good and fine, it's all great and dandy. Uh, herbs are not necessarily always needed, but yes, sometimes you want them. And, bonus topic, Samhain. Uh, Cara asked us after uh, seeing what she posted, and she's like, oh my gosh, people want to know what we're doing for Samhain, and I totally did not include that in the topics area, so a little bonus for you guys. On Saturday morning, if I don't have to be at my costume party and, uh, by that time, I am helping a fellow friend who actually owns the local uh, the local metaphysical occult shop. Her uh, her business burned down. Most of most of her business is able to be saved, but the upstairs of the business, which used to be an apartment, uh, is completely burned out. Um, Luckily, nobody was hurt, and the the one that was the daughter of the owner was living upstairs in the apartment. <coughs> Excuse me, I've had a cold lately, <clears throat> but the daughter that was living upstairs in that apartment had already gotten most of her stuff out of that apartment because she was moving anyway. Talk about in the nick of time. But some of her stuff did get uh, did get burned up. It does have a lot of smoke damage, and you know, just keep them in in your thoughts. But uh, yes, my my friend Carol, who is the one that owns uh, the Reed, the local witchy shop, uh, she's having a half price burn sale. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna help her in the morning on Saturday morning to uh, to put out some of that stuff and I'll stay with her for maybe a couple hours then I have a costume party that we have yearly for the Airman Ministry Center which the Airman Ministry Center if I haven't told you guys before is a, is a safe place for Airmen of any faith to be able to come and join and have fun with people that don't necessarily believe the same thing that they believe, but, you know, we each hold our own faith, and we recognize that other people may have a different faith, and we, we tell them to own that, to own their faith. So, we have our yearly costume party there, which is a, uh, a big event, and I might actually do a little blurb on my personal channel, so... Click on over to that whenever you get it, whenever Samhain comes and goes and all that. Um, and I've been working the night shift at work, which is why I just got up, you know, at like 6.30. So, yeah, on Sunday night, 
I'll probably do a uh, a small ritual. I may do a big ritual and just start earlier in the night because it is the night before. It's, so, yeah, I'll probably do a ritual on Sunday night before I go to work, before I I get, you know, dressed for work. Yeah, I'll do a little, uh, excuse me, I'll do a little ritual and, uh, or maybe a big ritual, like I said, I don't know yet. But yeah, that's going to be my weekend, and let let us know what you guys are planning to do for, for Samhain. It, this is actually going to be my, on Monday, on Samhain, it will be the official end of my year and a day, which has been just crazy, and even though I've studied a lot, it's... I'm nowhere near where I thought I would be at the end of a year and a day. So, but yes, more on that on my personal channel. Keep you hanging. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, until next time, may your ancestors be with you and may they bring coffee. Bye. I totally lost where I was going with this.